Um, I also want to take a moment, if I can, just to reflect on St Paul Callaghan, whose uh, uh, name uh, sits at the top of these awards. Uh, St Paul was, uh, as uh, Hewitt pointed out, a truly remarkable and gifted New Zealander, and his losses sorely marked by New Zealanders. He, uh, as you may aware, when I first became Prime Minister back in late 2008, I decided to have a Chief uh, Science Advisor at, uh, as an appointee to the government. And the reason I did that was I believed it was important to put science at the heart of the government, the thinking of the government and the decision making that we undertook. And so there were really only two uh, people that probably could have been considered for that role at that particular point in time, uh, Sir Peter Gluckman and Sir Paul Callaghan. As it was, um, Sir Paul had uh, at that time been diagnosed I think, with uh, cancer and so he was undertaking treatment and it wasn't possible for him really to take up that role and so um, Sir Peter was the obvious choice. Um, but I'm sure if he hadn't have had that disease then he would have been a logical successor uh, to Sir Peter Gluckman. Um, he was a, a remarkable man in my view and I had the opportunity to hear him speak on numerous occasions and so it's uh, going to be a great honour for whoever wins this award of the 12 finalists um, to have won the Sir Paul Callaghan Award. And indeed that's what we ultimately need is greater debate and knowledge of science in New Zealand. So it's one of the reasons why the government's been quite a heavy investor uh, in the area of science because uh, that is going to be the future of New Zealand as I see it. Whether it's tackling an issue like climate change or lifting productivity down on the farm, in the end we need scientific solutions to be the answer to the challenges that New Zealand faces. And um, I've long held the view for instance in the area like uh, climate change, uh, that, um, that the solution to those problems has to be found through science. Science, as I say, is going to be very important and we want to encourage young people to go into science. So we've, uh, as a government, promoted lots of different things to try and encourage people to, to um, enter the field of science and to be scientists and hopefully to retain those very fine young minds in New Zealand. New Zealand produces world-class scientists. Paul Callaghan, Alan McDiarmid, Ernest Rutherford, and a legion of others. Therefore, it is somewhat strange that science is not always reflected in the public consciousness of issues, nor policy implemented by government. This is a problem. Training scientists to be effective, powerful advocates for their craft is one way of helping to address this issue. If scientists were able every day to communicate their passion for their work in an understandable way to the public, this would help facilitate a much more useful discussion of science and the role it can play in our lives. Which brings me to the Eureka Symposium. I have spent most of my life in the New Zealand education system. At no point in my schooling did I encounter a program or competition designed to get scientists communicating. Eureka fits perfectly. To use a biological phraseology, it occupies a niche in which there is no competition at present. It forces young scientists like myself to grapple with presenting their ideas in a meaningful, understandable way. Even if participants aren't selected for the final, it has still provided them with an opportunity to engage with this process. I would argue this is extremely valuable, both to them as professionals and to our country as a whole. Scientists are smart people with good ideas and we generally benefit from what they do. Science also represents our best chance of addressing the environmental and demographic challenges the world is facing. It is my belief that good scientists, who are also good communicators, will be able to play a stronger role in this process, to our benefit socially, economically, and environmentally. In the assessment of the presentations, the judges are looking for four things. The first is that the communicators must be passionate and knowledgeable about an area of science, technology, engineering or mathematics. So the second thing that the judges are looking for is that this passion and knowledge of science or one of the other areas has a benefit or an impact on the social or economic or environmental future of New Zealand. The third element that the judges will be looking for is that the communicators use this presence and capability to communicate clearly, succinctly and persuasively their big idea. And the fourth factor, and this comes in in the national competitions, is that the, um, the judges are looking for an agility and a depth of knowledge that enables you to answer some pretty tricky questions about your big idea.
Uh, so obviously, like with most other competitions, the first thing you'll need to do to enter into the Eureka Rewards is to actually enter the competition. This is done with an online form and a two-page sort of summary of what you plan to talk about. The second thing you need to do is enter a regional competition. At this regional competition, you will deliver a six-minute summary of your 12-minute talk. Now, speaking for six minutes is pretty challenging, but that's something that will be able to help you plan to do today. The national judges will then select their um, national finalists from the pool of regional winners, um, and these people will be notified and invited to compete at the national symposium. And the next step is the national competition, which is held in Wellington before a panel of senior experts from their areas. A real highlight of this is the dinner, the awards dinner at Government House that night with the Governor General, Sir Jerry Matapurai, and a bunch of senior scientists and experts from around New Zealand. The wider pool that of regional winners that the um, selection panel picks their national finalists from all then also become part of what is called the Eureka Alumni. And the Eureka Alumni meet regularly for a forum where they discuss major uh, science issues with key politicians and leaders in science fields to discuss their impact on New Zealand.